Uh, let's take you straight to the House of Commons now, where we are looking forward to another crucial round of votes for the government. MPs due to vote on the Queen's speech, and they're facing the very real prospect of the government suffering an historic defeat. I'm joined by the parliamentary procedures expert, Joe Armitage. Joe. Um, Talk to me about why this defeat would be so significant for the government. Well, you know, it would be the first time uh, a government had been defeated on a Queen's speech since 1924. Uh, and only on four separate occasions in the 1800s has a government faced a defeat on its Queen's speech. So it would be very significant historically. Uh, and ordinarily, it would result in the government resigning uh, and going straight into a general election. But as we know, uh, the Fixed Term Parliament Act has plagued uh, the political system since 2011, and it's no longer within the Prime Minister's gift mm. to go straight into an election. So, in essence, it wouldn't really be massively substantial for the country uh, because the government would continue, but it would be the House of Commons indicating that it does not have mm. any confidence in the legislative programme that has been outlined by the government. Well, we are hearing that straight after that vote on the Queen's speech, the Prime Minister will stand up and deliver a speech uh, after the results, in which we expect him to reiterate his call for a general election. We're hearing from Beth Rigby, our political editor, that he will table that motion on Monday. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to call for a general election. It's a completely other thing to get it. How will the Prime Minister go about trying to win one? Precisely. Well, get one first, then exactly. he's got to try and win yes, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think it would probably come after the extension of Article 50 has been granted by the European Union. Uh, and if it is to October, or, or January rather, 31st, uh, then the Prime Minister will say we should use that time to have an election. Mm -hmm. And it will have a motion introduced, uh, and that will be something that requires two thirds of MPs mm -hmm. to get a general election, probably in December at some point. But if he can't pass that motion, it looks like Labour are prevaricating over this and they might not back that early election. If that happens, then he does have two other routes. He can have a vote of no confidence in his own government uh, and hope that the opposition MPs, goaded by him with that vote, actually decide not to vote confidence in the government. It could be in a bizarre situation where if they don't go along with that, they're actually saying they've got confidence exactly. in the government. Uh, and that would be a perverse situation. Or he can introduce a short bill to try to amend the Fixed Term Parliament Act and say, you know, notwithstanding the revisions in it, mm. uh, we should have an election on a prescribed uh, date. But the risk with the parliamentary approach and legislative approach uh, would be that you could have that bill amended to, for example, allow votes for 16 and 17 year olds. Uh, or a number of other different provisions in the favour of the opposition parties uh, on Brexit, because obviously this election would be all about Brexit. Uh, so they might well amend the legislation to allow younger people to vote, uh, which would be advantageous for the, the pro sort of remain side uh, in Parliament. Uh, well, we are expecting the vote on the Queen's speech to happen after five o'clock, but before that, a vote on two amendments. Remind uh, yep. us what the amendments are. Yep, so the Speaker selected two amendments. Uh, one is from the Leader of the Opposition, Jeremy Corbyn, and that just laments uh, the economic plans of the government. Mm -hmm. Number two. Uh, and number two will be in Blackford, the SNP leader, and that laments the end of freedom of movement that would come through Brexit. OK, well, MPs will be voting on those two amendments after five o'clock, and then there will be the vote on the Queen's speech, as I've just been discussing with Joe, a historic defeat on the cards for the government, the first time a Queen's speech has been voted down since 1924. We'll be back after five.